So the, the person that was in front of me, I'm like, one sec for me. And I went over and I said, hey, Dave, how's your, how's your day going? And he goes, he goes, my day's going to be fine, man. What the hell is full mental alchemist? <laughs> he didn't say hell. He said the F dash 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 word. <laughs> Not in a bad way. It's just this thing, I guess. So um, that was a fun experience. Was um, was killing Darth Vader all over again. Okay. Um, I want to I want to find a young lady here. Yes. Sir? Have I ever tried to perform alchemy? All I have to tell you is, this is not my real arm. <laughs> yes. Ooh, you look awesome. I wasn't filming Soul Eater. I greatly enjoyed it. <laughs> um, I love Soul Eater. You know, I auditioned for several, you know what? Something funny happened with Soul Eater. See, now you know how I feel, right? Um, something happened with Soul Leader that happens an awful lot with, with uh, anime series. As an actor, you tend to want to play the lead role, right? If you're an actor, you're like, hey, I'm gunning for the big role. I want to play the lead guy. And then you don't get it. You're like, boop. <laughs> and, and if you're lucky, you can play some other character. But you know what happened with Soul Leader? has happened to me repeatedly. I auditioned for some larger role, and I didn't get it. Oh, you were cute. I can't quite place you. I know you from somewhere. Um, but the same thing happened with Soul Eater that has happened a dozen times in my anime career, voice acting career. And that is that I would audition for some big role and I would get some much smaller role, but the smaller role would end up being so much more fun. Um, it's happened so many times. Uh, it happened, you guys know a show called Full Metal Panic? I wanted to play Sosuke so bad. And I did get to, and I ended up playing Kurt Swemmer. But Kurt Swemmer's awesome! He was the best! So, I loved playing Spirit, the Soul Leader. And, uh, I always get a kick out of seeing Soul Leader cosplayers. And, and Death Side cosplayers especially. Yes, yes. Are you excited for Beautiful World? <laughs> What's Beautiful World? The new season of Italia. Yes! <laughs> Oh my gosh, yes. You know, I feel kind of weird playing Greece with what's happening with Greece right now. I'm like, my country's going down the toilet. And I'm the character. <laughs> Did you really? I didn't get to see you. Oh my gosh. See, he's another one. I just love Greece and his perverted obsession with cats. Yeah. What's your favorite part of, or what was your favorite part of the Oh my gosh, every single thing about Tamaki was my favorite. <laughs> you guys, I don't wanna, I, I, I feel bad when I often repeat stories that, that you may have seen on a YouTube video or something, but the truth is the truth, you know what I mean? Like, I, I have one experience, and that's the one that I relay. But let me tell you guys something about Oran. I, I had so much fun playing that character. I, I was introduced to the show before it was even licensed. Caitlin Glass called me one day and she said, there's this show I just found, a friend of mine, and she said, there's this character, and it's you. It, it doesn't, it, it's not like you, it's you. And I was like, hmm. I wonder what Caitlin thinks I like. Right? So she said, let me give you a disc with four or five episodes on it. So I, I got the disc and I started watching it, and there he was. Tommy <laughs> And he was so smooth and so sweet and romantic and handsome. And he, re he runs this host club and he's so kind to the ladies. And, and I was like, yeah, Caitlin. <laughs> bow, chicka, bow, bow. <laughs> And she likes me. <laughs> and then I got to the episode where he's wailing in a pile in the corner, sobbing and acting like an idiot. I was like, wait, wait a minute. Which one of these do you like? You think is like me? And so, but the point is, I fell in love with him. I love him. So I, I wanted so badly to play that role. And I, um, when I did get to cast in that role, 
when we were recording that show, I I don't think there's ever a character, maybe Rain now in Free, but to that point in my career, there was no character that I played that I savored every moment of the recording session. A lot of times, even with Full Metal, I didn't know much about it. It was all new to me as I was recording it. I didn't know a ton going into it. But with, with Oron, I knew a lot about it, and I was already in love with it. So every time I would go into a core topic, I was like, oh, I love this show so much. And I would purposefully mess up the lines so I could record it again <laughs> to make it last long. Yes? You know, I shouldn't, I shouldn't even let you ask a question with your little animals on my head, but that's okay. Um. I know, right? <laughs> Well, when you go into a studio to, to start recording a show, you draw your you draw your uh, your influence from different things. Uh, one of the main things is like what the character looks like. Like you look at an image of this guy and you're like, okay, what, what would his voice be like? And you kind of come up with something. But then you'll throw it out there, and the director may say, um, try this, or why don't you deepen it a little bit, or why don't you make it a little nasally, you know, or rounder. You know, I mean, just, and you start, so now the director has input. And then you, so your ideas, and the original um, art design, and the director's ideas, and then finally, uh, sometimes you're influenced by the Japanese. Like some of the Japanese shows that we do, the people that created the show, like they, they want it to sound like theirs. So people will get cast that sound as much like the original actors as possible. You know what I mean? Uh, and then sometimes not. Like in the case of Full Metal, uh, you probably all know, a girl named Romy Park voiced Ed in Full Metal in Japanese. She was amazing. And I remember going, I can't do that. I mean, I, on my best day, I can't sound like that. But the good news was that the Japanese, I found out later, that the Japanese owners of Full Metal, the creators of Full Metal, wanted Edward in, in English to be more masculine. They, they wanted him to be more guy, boy, so they decided they wanted a guy to be cast. Um, same way now. So, um, there are a lot of influences that go into the voice. Um, and he was a lot of fun. He was just a, what was he? He was an evil honor student, wasn't he? Like the overlord evil scientist? Yes, but a comedic one. Yeah. Like a harmless one. <laughs> yes. Will you tell the donut story? Really? Okay. How many of you, put your hands down one second, because we need to see a show of hands, because I, I need to know the truth here. How many of you do not know the donut story? You're lying! Oh. People told me Memphis people were honest people. Okay, here's the donut story. The donut story in 2015. We were recording Full Metal, and there was this thing. Remember the episodes with the brothers that were pretending to be Edward and Alphonse? Yeah, yeah. The other brothers, Elric, yeah. and it turned out to be these two guys, Russell and Fletcher Trangham. Russell Trangham. Uh -huh. So, do you remember, Ed find them, they find them, like they track them down, and they confront them. Yeah. And one of them punches Ed in the face. And I was like, whoa. But then, then in the very next scene, when you see Ed, his little cheek is all swollen up. And I was like, oh, is your dad adorable? And so I, I, I suddenly had this idea, and I thought, you know what? If, his, if your cheek was actually puffed up like that, it would probably affect the way you talk a little bit. So I said to Colleen Clinkenberry, I'm like, can I five minutes? I'm going to go, I'm going to get something. She goes, all right. So I run to the vending machine room, and I was looking for something that I could put in my mouth that could approximate the puffy cheek. Doritos, no cookies, no lifesaving. <gasps> Powdered sugar donuts. You know the ones, this big around, they fit perfectly in the cheek. I mean, I even looked like I put them in my hand, and it looked like it. And so, 
when I ran through a package of six and I ran back into the studio and, and, I, and I said, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to these in and make me sound like I'm to punch my face and it sounds great. And she's like, all right. So I got in the booth and I put one in. I'm like, okay, I'm ready, go ahead. 